I'll be introducing our guest speaker. Um, this is Zach in the Zach Kadara. Mr. Zubiru Kadari, the Zakonomist. He is um, a great teacher. It's on the screen. He's a great teacher. He's a business development profession now. He's um, someone I'm looking up to to learn from. Now I'm into the business development profession too. So someone I'm spying on. But uh, when you are doing anything, don't be covering your books too. Let me be spying so I can be copying from you. Eh? I need to pass the exams too. You know, at every point in time, we need to spy on people. We need to look into people's book. We look into people's life to learn. We are not in the exam hall when the people will say you should not giraffe. Here in this world, in the business world, you are free to giraffe. Let's put our hands together for Mr. Zubiri Kadiri. Thank you very much, day one, for the privilege to come and speak to you. Sorry, I feel very distant here. Do you mind if I come down? Is it okay if I come down? All right, thank you. Don't worry, it's like up there, but I prefer to be closer to you. Thank you very much. Uh, so I have a few minutes to dispense what I have. Uh, don't worry, that is just plenty English. Let me take it off. Or oh, do you want me to leave it there? I'm a business engineer by profession. Um, I also am a brand strategist. I wear many caps, uh, but the most important one for you today is to meet me as a business engineer, as a trainer, who is here to talk to you about a very simple and effective tool called time. How many of you don't know what time is? Who doesn't know what time is? All right, we all do. So I have a very simple presentation for a few minutes, and I decided to title it this. It's titled, Time Masters or Time Monsters? Mastering the resource for time. So I want you to do me a favor. Let me ask the person beside you. Are you a time master or a time monster? <laughs> ask the person very well. Are you a time master or a time monster? <laughs> yeah. So you see, it sounds funny, right? But the truth of the matter is that if we look at ourselves, Many of us are what we call the business world time like monsters. <laughs> Many of us are what we call time monsters. So, what is the meaning of a time master and a time monster? That's what we want to look at today. So, let me go straight to my presentation. Uh, first and foremost, the first thing I want you to understand is that time is a very precious resource. But here's the most interesting thing about time we all have exactly the same amount of it. Who disagrees? Time is a very interesting resource. In fact, it is considered the most valuable resource to humankind. But the most interesting part of it is that we all have exactly the same amount of it. Every one of us has 24 hours every day. Nobody has more, nobody has less. So you see, time is a fair player. True of us. True of us. I need a response. See, the last team of P1 I met, eh? They were so contagious, eh? I've been, dream I've been drinking their, con their contagiousness, so please don't disappoint me. Those guys were the Eagles Guru or Eagles Summit or something. They were fantastic, so please, I'm catching that buzz. You need to respond to me. Is time a fair player? Yes. Uh huh. Because it gives every one of us the same amount of resource. But this is where the trick of time comes into play. I said that, I said, However, the value worth of our time is determined by what we produce individually. So while time is an equal resource to every one of us, the output of time is not always the same. Yeah. You agree? Yeah. It's not always the same. So what time produces as a value worth is determined by what we can do with it. So we all have the same currency in this place. But some people, by output, have been able to improve and increase their proficiency. And that's what I just want to show you in a simple way. So let's analyze this. I said here, I said the only true way to value the worth of time invested is in the result or output produced. Who disagrees? 
The only true way to value what you have done with the resource called time is the result you produce. Does anybody dispute? No. So we all agree. So it means if some people are partners on one level and some people are senior partners on the other level, that output is not because they had more time than you. It just means they have learned how to make better use of... Can I hear you? Fantastic. So, let's bring it home to the real business. The official currency for measuring time is money. Who, who agrees or disagrees? You see that picture up there? What does it say? Can I hear you? The truth of the matter is that in the business world, there's only one currency for measuring the value of time. It is money. How valuable your time is, is reflected in your bank account statement. If at the end of the month, you got 30 days, you know 30 days is actually time. It is 24 hours times 30. That is what is called 30 days, which is the cycle of a month. If the balance you have at that time, as a member of P1, is zero naira, the value of your time is zero in money. That's how much you have done with the 24 hours you have. It just means that you didn't do anything. Who agrees or who disagrees? Do you disagree? Do you disagree? So, if the value of your time at the end of 30 days is zero naira, if we agree, share everybody agree when we say time is money. Do we all agree? We all agree. So, if at the end of 30 days, your balance is zero. Oh, time is not money. You disagree? Nice. Can you tell us why you disagree? <laughs> okay, she's disagreeing that time is not money. So let's go back to the analysis. We said we all have the same amount of resource, which is time. True of us. Time is given to every one of us equally. But the output of that time is determined by each and every one of us what we do with that time so that some people take that time and produce one result and other people take it and produce another so to help you understand this let me now bring it home see this disagreement that um, would you made let's bring it home so i'm going to ask a question and then we're going to analyze it i said how do we determine what influences the monetary value of our time since we all have exactly the same time to invest every day that's the question I want to answer. To answer this question for you, I'm going to use a simple analogy. Can everybody see what's on the slide? Can we all see it? I call it the $300,000 question. So let me show you the real life analogy. This is not a hoax. This is the truth. What you are seeing on, the, on, this, on this screen is the truth. Let me read what's on it for those who can't see it. It says, a bar of iron costs $5. $5. That's what the bar of iron cost. But see, when it is made into horseshoes, it is worth $12. That's bar of iron. If you make it into horseshoes, it is worth $12. But when it is made into needles, it is worth $3,500. The same bar of iron. However, if you make it into balance springs for wristwatches, the balance spring in your wristwatch, it is worth three hundred thousand dollars. Which bar of iron? The same one, five dollar. The same bar of iron can produce twelve dollar, can produce three thousand five hundred dollars, and can produce three hundred thousand dollars. See the note on that. Your own worth, your own value is determined also by what you are able to make of yourself. In other words, what you are able to make of your time. Are we still arguing it? Are we still arguing it? So you see, let's liken our five dollar bar iron to time. These three people got exactly the same thing. Same five dollar bar iron. But they produce three different outcomes. Three different outcomes. What is the difference between these three people? That's what I want to just simply inundate to you today. What's the difference? I want you to pause for a minute to ask yourself. I have 
have the same 24 hours like everybody who is sitting in this hall, and there are over 500 people here for what I can see. I have the same 24 hours as them. I have the same resources as them. Time. Why will I become the $300,000 person, not the $12 person? That's what I want to show you. And I'll start my presentation now. I want to tell you about something very simple. It's called resource management. You can Google it. It's not like it's mine per se. It's a, it's a system for, if you do project management, this is the first topic you'll be studying, process in, in project management. And the entire concept of project management is built on this concept called resource management. So what is resource management? Let's break it down. What is resource? Resource is any material that you have potential to produce an outcome from. So time is a resource. Money is a resource. People are a resource because they can produce value. Anything you can take and produce all your value out of is called a resource. Today, I just want to introduce you to a simple concept called resource management. Why is the word management so key? Let me explain what management is. In life, we all have the same resource. I just enumerated, I just enumerated one. The most key of them is what? Time. What management simply is, is your ability to maximize the use of that resource. So, in breaking it down, I'm going to explain something on the slide. So look at this slide. And uh, let's see if my pointer can be my uh... So look at the left side of the circle. I believe everybody can see it. It says what on the blue side? It says listing what resources you need. Hmm? I want to break down this whole thing for you. On the left side, it says listing what resources you need. So the idea of project management or setting goals for yourself based on time management is that you have an outcome you want to achieve. That outcome is what is defined at the bottom. Look at the pink side. It says making a schedule that meets a deadline. How do you achieve that? There are two things on top that you use to achieve it, and this is where the time masters are in. This is where you differentiate yourself between being a time master and a time master. On the left side, it says listing what resources you need. That's the blue side. However, look at the right side, the, the yellow side carefully. It says estimating how many of those resources you need. Let me show you the two key words there. On the blue side, it says listing what resource you need. Let me illustrate this and you will get it. I am a bank. Hmm? We are two banks now. Let me use two arbitrary banks in Nigeria. Let me use a money company. So there are two banks in Nigeria. At the end of the year, they both declare the hundred billion naira in profit. Do you understand? They make the hundred billion naira, right? Did they make money? Did they make money? I need a response. I need to be sure you're following me. Yeah. Two of them, did they make money? Yeah. So you will say they are what? Effective, right? Yeah. Because they are producing results. However, Bank A used 70 billion naira to produce 100 billion. But Bank B used only 25 billion naira to produce that same 100 billion. Are they both effective? Yes. Are they both effective? Yes. But are they both efficient? No. Why? Because one person was able to do more with less. Brings us back to this. You see the picture now? So many times, the outcome is not as powerful as what produces that outcome. Sometimes, in fact, in business, there's a concept we call the bazooka approach. You use a bazooka to kill a fly. We call it the bazooka approach. There is no use killing a fly with a bazooka. It's too much resources expended to kill such a small thing. Your proficiency in time management is a function of the output. If you want to know how effective and how efficient you are in time management, just check out the output you are producing. That's what this diagram is trying to explain to you. So let me summarize it. On the left hand side, you see effectiveness. What you do to be effective is simply know the resources you need. If I want to bake a cake, I know I need flour, I know I need yeast, I know I need all that, right? If I put it together, I'll bake a cake. Do you understand? I'll bake a cake. However, for you to become efficient, you don't just know what you need, you have to be able to, keyword, estimate. 
how much of that resource you need to produce the cake right without what wastage. The key word that differentiates a time master from a time monster is the word waste. Note that. They are both effective, but the difference between them is their ability to manage resources so they can reduce or, if possible, completely eliminate waste. Am I making sense? Now, if you look at the two circles, look at the center that they cross themselves. Where they cross themselves also crosses with the bottom. What's at the bottom? Making a schedule that meets your deadline. So, in this business, you set targets for yourself. I want to sell X number of real estate or land. Hmm? That's where you tap from. We call that your expectation or your defined value. So, it means that every of these concepts will not even start to make sense to you if you don't start at that bottom. If you don't define your outcome. So, how many of you here have a goal for June? And for July, uh, the the compare just said uh, he set a goal to make five hundred thousand so that he can furnish and eventually he made what five million. You see, he started from the bottom. He set a goal and he surpassed it by just listening to him. He has shown me that he set a goal and he also made a list of what he needed to do. But the reason why he could produce five million out of five hundred thousand. Is because he has mastered efficiency. So it's not enough for you to be effective, which, will, like I said, is the core the bazooka approach in, in business. You don't have to have a bazooka approach. You don't have to knock on every door. How many of you agree that everybody is not your customer? How many of you agree? Everybody can be your customer. So just because people can buy doesn't mean you have to sell them. The question is can they buy at your price? See, you doing that is moving from effectiveness to efficiency so that you know who you are targeting. Everybody is not your customer. Everybody can buy real estate, but not everybody can buy your real estate. That is the difference between just making a list of resources of what you need and truly sitting down to estimate how much of it you need so that you can achieve that target by just working for X number of days in a month as against somebody who is spending that same time, three months to achieve that result you have achieved in just 30 days. The difference is in learning how to be efficient over being effective, so that you can produce what? An expectation, a defined value. This is where the time masters are different from the time monsters. The time masters are those who have mastered this process. The time monster is the man who uses 90 billion, no, 99 billion naira to make a profit of 100 billion naira. He's effective, true of us. Is he effective? Yeah. He's producing results. But is he producing results at the optimum level? No. Because people are making more for far less. Now that I've set that in motion, let me break this thing down to you. I want, my focus today is you can't learn time management if you don't learn different things, effectiveness and efficiency. And your goal is to be an efficient person, not to be an effective person. The fact that you wake up every day and you get going, you're already effective. That's true. You're already effective. But the, all, the, the, the key thing that we want you to take from this section is that you have to become an efficient person. That is the only way you can become a time master. Because that resource you have is what everybody else sitting in this hall has. 24 hours. That's all we have. But some people are doing more than you are doing because they have mastered how to use that time. They've gone with effectiveness. They've gone into efficiency. So that their time management can be excellent. So, let, I left this as a clear definition for you. Listen to the key part. I don't want to go over everything. But the key one, if you look, there's a definition there. The adjective called effective and the adjective called efficiency. See the definition. To be effective, it means to be able to adequately accomplish the purpose by producing intended or expected results. That's what it means to be effective. Adequate to produce a purpose, to so accomplish a purpose, producing the intended or expected results. That's what it means to be effective. It's just about effectiveness is about producing results. However, 
For you to be efficient, see the definition. This is the dictionary.com definition. It says performing. Listen to those words, write it down. Performing or functioning, next word, in the best possible manner with the least waste of time and effort. I say it again. Efficiency is being able to perform or function in the best possible manner with the least waste of what? Time and effort. So, it is very possible to waste time. Tell your neighbor. It is very possible to waste time. Time can be wasted. How? By simply being inefficient. You can be effective and still waste time. So, you can be effective and still waste time. But when you learn efficiency, which is the ability to avoid wastage in time and effort, then you become efficient in your resource. So that there is a way to do this job you are doing right now, this business you are doing right now, or whatever you want to do in life, that you can do it at an optimum level so that you don't have to spend so much time and effort to achieve the same result. We are all individuals, so I'm sure everybody here has their own individual strategies that they are using. You will find that some of your strategies are working in certain places and not working in other places. You know why? Because you have taken the time to learn how to be efficient in those places where you are working. You see those places you are not working, it just means you have not learned efficiency there. Take the time and learn it. So now that you have this distinction between effectiveness and efficiency, I want to break something down to you. This, for me, is the most important chart in my conversation. You can screen grab this, you can take a picture of it, and use this to measure yourself. It's called the efficient, the efficient, well, efficient quotient. It's a four, it's a four box quotient for measuring yourself. If you can't measure yourself in these four boxes, you cannot really tell whether you are being efficient or just being effective. And there's a reason why percentages are there. The percentages will show you your efficiency level and your effectiveness level. So, let me show you the difference. Let me start from the bottom zero. That's zero percent. What it says in it, it says, pursuing what? Wrong goals first. Remember that? Remember the slide? What's the first thing you start with? The bottom. You define what? You define your expectation, which is your what? Your determined value. What's your determined value for spending time in this business that you do with P1? You define a value. The compare said his value was to get 500,000, right? He defined his value, but he produced 5 million. Why did he produce 5 million? Because he not only focused on being effective, he focused on being efficient. Now come to this chart. If at the bottom of that chart, you do not even set a defined goal, which means you go into this month without a goal, my question is, how do you measure what you don't try? See, let that sink in. How do you measure what you don't try? If you want to be among the top players of this company in 12 months from now, the question is the company will set a target for you and tell you, if you hit this mark, you will get this mark, right? Now, if you don't take that target and make it a target before you even start to break it down, how do you track and measure whether you are in tune with the goal? So if you take that task for the next 12 months, the right thing for you to do is not to break it into months, so how do you know if you are closer to your defined value? It is by first identifying what your goal is over that time period you want to achieve it. Do I make sense? Is everybody following me? Is it confusing to anybody? Who understand it? Okay. So look at this quotient. I started from the zero. It says, pursue what? Wrong goals. And you are also what? Inefficient at it. Which means, not only are you chasing the wrong goal, but you are doing it in such an expensive way. 
It's like, let me be practical. It's like printing fly, taking P1 flyers and going to share them in secondary schools. Do you understand that? That is the height of ineffectiveness and inefficiency. But are you working? You are working. Are you not working? Are you not working? You are working. You are working now. Are you not busy? You are busy. But you are taking the flyers and you have gone to secondary schools to share them. That's the definition of 0%, right? That is the definition of 0%. Who doesn't agree? Do we all agree that that's 0%? You don't agree? Oh, tell us why. Somebody want to tell us why? Oh, please, would you? You want to tell us why? <laughs> please tell us why. The reason is both players will get to the parents. And the parents will get to the parents. Fantastic approach. Remember what I said. Very good contribution. Remember what I said about the bazooka approach. Using a bazooka. How many of you don't know what a bazooka is? You know what a bazooka is a rocket launcher. Using a rocket launcher to kill a fly. That's what the bazooka effect is. Using a rocket launcher to kill a fly. So yes, it gets to the parents. My question is, why those parents go out every day and they are inundated by 10 other real estate companies? How effective is your method to reach them? Because you see, in marketing today, there's what we call the captivating experience. There must be an emotional connection. My child comes from school, first and foremost. If my child comes from school and is bringing a fly for real estate, I have a problem with that story. Because I didn't send my child to school to go and do what? Carry a flyer for real estate. I sent my So automatically, emotionally, I have blocked that flyer out of my head. There's no matter what is in that flyer, I will listen to it. Because I didn't send my child to school to go and carry a real estate flyer. Do you not see what my child is doing? You see inefficiency in it? Because you did not connect with the person through the right channel. Does it make sense now? Yes. Why that method is inefficient? Yes. Because just, just because the flyer got into the person's hand doesn't mean the person will buy. There's something I always say to people. If it doesn't appeal to our senses, it will never get on our list of expenses. Which means, whatever you are selling, if it doesn't first make sense to our sense, we will never give you our money. So if I have a problem with the fact that my child came from school with a real estate flyer, it will appeal to my sense. I don't know what I need to get my money. Now that we have that clear, do we now understand what inefficient and ineffective is? Is it clear? Can I get a response? It's clear. So at that point, you are firing on zero percent. No matter what you do, is on zero. Because you are going about it the total wrong way. Let's see what is 30. What is 30% of your, when you, when you are, remember a time master is somebody who is trying to function at 100%. This is a journey by the way, and it's okay to start from zero. Every one of us starts from there, that's true. But you have to understand what this journey is and how this journey culminates. Now, the bottom is majorly the effective, we're trying to deal with the effective part at the bottom. What is great effectiveness? Now, the second one says, you are 30%. If you are pursuing the wrong goal, but you are what? Efficient. Which means, you have unconsciously built a system that keeps your cost down. Or you are just chasing the wrong goal. So some people have unconsciously learned how to manage money. By virtue of association, virtue of experience. Some people have learned how to manage relationships by virtue of association and experience. But they are using that skill they are built to chase the wrong type of goal. So I, can, I could have been an apprentice, for example, with a furniture maker. I've learned how to make furniture. And now I wake up tomorrow and I want to start selling digital products. Do you understand? Have I learned a skill? Have I learned a skill? I've learned a skill of how to sell to people just that I have learned how to sell to furniture makers. I have not learned how to sell to digital uh, subscribers. Do you understand? That is what being efficient without being effective is. So, the right thing to do is to now convert that your effectiveness, that skill you have learned, because in learning that skill you have not got to avoid when you are trying to sell furniture. Sure, 
But the task before you right now is not to sell furniture, it's to sell real estate. So you have already learned the modus of avoiding waste. You know the kind of conversations to start. You know where to approach the person from. You just haven't learned how to do it for real estate. Does that make sense? Yeah. That is you being what? Efficient without being what? Effective. Which means, it's a, look at the two of them, they are at the bottom. If you get this all wrong, if you don't define your expectation of value from the beginning, everything you build on top is faulty. That's the point of that diagram. Do you understand now? Which means, the goal is very important. And that's where it starts from. What's your key one goal for the next 15 days of June 2019? If you, have, if you didn't have one before, do yourself a favor. Take a pen and paper and write it. Let it be crazy. Don't worry, I'll come to your side. Let it be crazy to you. Let it look outrageous to you. But do yourself a favor. Write it down. What's your goal for 2019, June? You have about 15 more days to play with this month. What's your goal? Because if you don't define that value and that expectation, everything you do in effectiveness and efficiency doesn't have a basis. So there's no score. What's your 12 month goal in this business? Do you have one? Because the only way we can measure the value of your time is in that output. That's why I started from there. The only way you can measure the value of that your time is that output you produce in one month, in three months, in six months, in nine months, in 12 months. If at the end of 12 months, God forbid, you have fuel, that is the value of the time that you have invested. So now that you understand that that value is very key, let's look at the top part. Look at the top part. I already kind of enumerated this. It says, pursuing the 50% is pursuing the right goal, but you are inefficient with a very high cost. So yes, you have a clear cost value. You have defined it. I want to achieve X target. The problem is you are going about it the wrong way. Practical example like this is you print 1,000 flyers, go on every street corner and just share it. So you meet, every, go to the bus stop, you meet every kind of people at the bus stop, two of us, and you just keep pushing it out. Don't be deceived, it produces results. It does, it does. But the question is, is that your most efficient strategy? Is that your most efficient strategy? Do you realize that you have more power in your secondary school WhatsApp group to get a higher conversion than you do going to the bus of the Let me see. Do you realize you have more power in your secondary school alumni group on WhatsApp, reaching more people than you do going to a bus of the buyers? That's the difference between 50 and 100 percent. You know why? At the heart of this whole thing, yeah, for what you do in P1 is that you must understand that what you are selling. It's not just land. What you are selling is relationships. Write that down. Your number one product is relationship. So if you are not optimizing your relationship channels, you are going to be effective and not efficient. It also means that you have to now be deliberate about building relationship channels. Because real estate a relationship product. Do I make sense? Do I make sense? Real estate is a relationship product. People most times buy not because of the value of the money, but because of the value associated with the money. Write that down. So, if I typically want to live in a neighborhood, and I find out that four of my friends already have a product in that a, a property in that neighborhood. And I try to decide where to buy. And I have options to buy in four neighborhoods. But in one of those neighborhoods, three of my friends already have a real estate there. What do you think? Where do you think I'll choose? So you see, by really buying relationships, when we buy your land, or when I when we buy our land, not necessarily buying the land. So people have seen the future of Lagos, the future of Bowie, the future of all these places, and they want to tap into it. Thank God for a great system that P1 has developed to give people a platform. Your job is to now just put those people 
into place. All you need to do that is what? Relationships. So sell relationships. That's the difference between being effective and being efficient. By understanding this simple truth, it will change the way you market. By doing that, you will become more efficient in your time management. So you will deliberately see those secondary school groups that you acquire, don't be quiet, you'll be talking there. See, if you don't have any reason to talk, be talking because of P1. You have more chance in that group than you do at the bus stop. Do I make sense? Are you understanding the difference? See those groups you belong to, church group everywhere. Don't be ghost to. Don't be a ghost. Be talking. Today, share this. Tomorrow, share P1. Next, tomorrow, share something like that. Share P1. Be sharing. The time will come, they realize that when they need someone to trust when it comes to real estate, it's you. They will come to you. It's easier. Efficient people will rather position for the market to come to them than for them to go to the market. Effective people go to the market. Efficient people position for the market to come to them. Do I make sense? Yes. Anybody getting this? Yes. Alright, so let me bring it home and I can take questions. This is going to be my last slide. Listen, you see, for you to be efficient, you have to be able to set smart targets. What we call smart. I'm sure you're familiar with this, but I just want to enumerate it as a reminder. When you set targets, your targets have to obey these five rules so that they are realistic and achievable. What are they? One, S is for what? Specific. Remember this. What's at the bottom? Your defined what? Value, your expectation. It has to be specific. How are you going to measure whether you are achieving it, how close you are to it, or whether you are not going anywhere at all if it is not defined? And in this business, it's in numbers. It has to be a figure. It's not, it's not I hope. It has to be a figure. There is no I think in this one. It has to be a figure. Your goal has to be specific. Define it. Yes, sometimes at the beginning it sounds crazy. So let's do an experiment. If you know genuinely you haven't tried it before, try it now. Give yourself a number for the next 15 to 45 minutes. Give yourself a number. Let's get practical. Give yourself a number. Yeah. And let's see how this works. Give yourself a number. I want to sell X number in this number of time. Welcome, ma. <laughs> <laughs> so, give yourself a target. This number of time. Be specific over this period of time. Choose your time. Now, once you have done that, the next thing you need to do is what? It's what? What's number two? Can I hear you? Can I hear you? Measure. See, right there, the, the, the screen is a bit bright, so you can't see. So let me read what is the note on that on S specific. It says, provide a clear description of what needs to be achieved. That's what's under the note of S. That's how you are specific. Describe in plain terms what you want to achieve. Number two is what? Measure. It, it must be measurable. Under the note, there says, include, include a matrix with a target. So it's not enough to say, I want to make 100 million naira. You have to say, I want to make it in 12 months. I want to make it in 6 months. I want to make it in 2 months. You must be able to measure it. So if you want to make 100 million in 2 months, and at 1 month, you are 20, what do you say to yourself? You are only what? 25% gone. Two of us. But you now have less time to do three times what you have already done in one month. That's what measuring does for you. That's the power of measuring. If you can't measure it, you can't track it. Is it making sense? So if you want to be a time master, you must learn to be specific. You must learn to measure things. Measure everything. Especially when it comes to this task that you have. You are the one that set the goal specifically for yourself. Now you have to have a system for measuring it. So if in my conversions I realize that for every 100 prospects I reach, I reach, I convert 10. By doing that analysis, if I want 100 people to buy, I have to now know that I need to reach how many people? A thousand people. 
if on the average 100 people will die, that is what they call measurement. So you cannot do this business with anywhere below this. It does not work. You are just being effective without being what? What's the third one? Now, when you set that goal for yourself, it must be what? Achievable to you. Which means you must set a challenging target, but it has to be realistic. Now, let me not deceive you. There are sometimes you can set a target for yourself and you will blow that target. You can say, I want to sell 10 million in one month. And in that month, you do 40 million. Is it impossible? I mean, you are experiencing that in this business. But let me ask you a quick question. How many of you have been able to repeat it again after it happened? Do you know why? Because for something to be achievable, it has to be realistic. So yes, life may throw you those one of one ups that come in. But you can't build your system on those one ups You have to build it on the realistic one. So we call those the flash pants in business. So we call them flash pan profits, which means they just flash. They clash. But a business, as a business, as a consultant in this business or as a partner or whatever, you cannot build your successful system on that. You have to have a system and a mechanism for measuring something that is what? Attainable to you. So that's why when you have a measuring system and you have one of those flash pan profits, you realize that this is a flash pan profit. Do that make sense? You don't say, ah, I made 40 million today, so next month it will be 40 million. Sometimes life can be so great to you, and next month is 80 million. But that doesn't take away the fact that you still have to have a measurable system. Or else you will be you will be experiencing what we call bloating, not growing. When you bloat, what happens eventually? You bust. So you need to know the difference between bloating and growing. Just because you had a bloat month and you made 40 million when you normally make 10 million, doesn't mean that your system is not a 40 million system. How do you measure it? It is by knowing how realistic you are. Go back to the months that you didn't make 40 million. Go back to the first three months before that month. What did you do? What was consistent in those months? It will tell you, then come back to the month you made 40 million. Check what you did that made 40 million. Find out how realistic it is to sustain that thing. Once you identify that thing, start to build more capacity on that thing. And in no time, that 40 million you made will become achievable. But at that first instance, it won't be. Why? Because it's called a flashback of it. Do I make sense? Is anybody confused about what I'm explaining? All right. The fourth one is what? It must be relevant. So you see, this relevant, for me, is one of the most important parts of the smart goal. Most times, we define this relevance based on ourselves. And that's where the problem is. In marketing, when you set a smart goal, the relevance of the goal is not based on you, it's based on the customer. Let me explain that. So yes, you set a specific goal, right? You have found a way to measure it, and you believe it's achievable. If the client doesn't feel that that goal is relevant to them, your goal is babash. So when you define the relevance of what you're trying to do, start by defining how relevant it is for the client first. So that you can use that to measure how it's going to be relevant for you. Because if the client is not relevant to the client, the client is not going to do what? Give you their money. If they don't give you their money, how smart is your goal? Zero. You're going nowhere. So the relevance, look at the note there, it says, keep your goal consistent with what? Higher level goals. What's the higher level goal? The client. Not you. The client. I can sit down here and set a goal. I want to make 100 million in 30 days. Is there anybody stopping me now? It's not my goal. It's my goal. But the reality of that goal is going to be determined by the client. So the client is the relevance, is the key relevant factor in my smart goal. That's why the note there says, keep your goal word consistent. Make sure that that goal you are setting is in alignment with that client. What is the higher goal? The goal of that client. That client wants to purchase a piece of dream estate. Wants to have aspects to a piece of real estate 
for a future purpose or for a present purpose or whatever. My goal must connect to that. And I, as a good time manager, I must have systems in place to make sure that those goals I'm setting is focused on that. And then what is the last one? We talked about it. It must be time bound. For you to measure it, it must be time bound. I want to make a hundred million in 30 days, in 60 days, in 90 days, in 365 days. And you, that is the only way you can track and measure your progress. So, can I see any time, any time masters in the house? Who is going to become a time master from today? If you are going to still be a time monster, let me see your hand. No more time monsters. We are all what? Time Thank you very much. That's my presentation. <laughs> I'm going to take some questions from my short presentation or anything around time management, optimizing your time, efficiency, proficiency. I think I only have one question. Ha! So, with seriously, are you telling me that I was so clear that you don't have questions? Wow, that's a good job. So give me a round of applause. <laughs> you mean I was so clear, you don't have questions. I mean, I was so clear. Like, seriously. Wow, man, I just blew five inches. <laughs> thank you, man. Go ahead. All right, thank you very much. Now, you said something in your presentation. You said that um, efficient people position themselves for people against them, <coughs> while inefficient people go to these people, right? Yes. All right. Now, um, I meet somebody in the space uh, on, online. Yeah. Do you want to meet a person? Okay. Eh? Yeah. Now, you now try to establish a relationship, you understand? Yes. Your whole goal is for marketing. Mm -hmm. But the other person, I mean, it's something else. Yeah. How do you balance that? Number one. Wow. Number two. You say which novel? If you get up, you sit in that, sit in that. <laughs> no, they will come. I love the person. No, they will come. They will come. Thank you very much. So, she has a very sincere question. Please give her a round of applause. Because you see, sometimes in communication, if you don't reiterate what you say, people will misunderstand you the first time. Now, my presentation doesn't say you shouldn't go to them. My presentation is more of you should position for them to come to you. That doesn't mean you are in a passive state. You are in an active state. So let me illustrate it. I want the ants to come to me. There are 3,000 ants in this whole compound. There's one way to find them. I can go over this compound picking each and every one of them, right? Or I can do the work and just position sugar here. And they do all what? Come to me. Do you understand? Doesn't mean I didn't do anything. But I did the efficient work. I positioned sugar. So they will just come to me. It doesn't mean I don't do any work. It just means that I'm strategic. So let me define that word. You hear the word strategic, strategic. It's not a big word. You know me because I like to confuse people. It's not a big word. Let me explain what strategy is. Strategy, for there to be strategy, it means that you must first recognize that there are options. Strategy cannot exist if there are no options. So for strategy to exist, there must be at least two options. Now, strategy is simply choosing the best amongst options. So if you live your life naturally without creating options for yourself, you cannot act, act, you cannot detect strategy. So if you only approach you have to marketing P1, the sharing client, it means that you are dead on strategy. Do you understand? But what are the other ways? That's it. Now, you have to be able to measure each and, of, each and every one of these ways. So know the one that works best for you. That is working for you. Doesn't mean you work for the next person. Because your mix is not that person's mix. That's why you have to do the work to understand what works for you. Take an example. If I used to be a banker now, I was a relationship manager. Of course, marketing real estate is going to be a lot easier for me. You know why? I only have a pool of network. That for what some of food I can reach. Trust me, I'm leaving school, fresh school leaver. I don't have that option. Strategy will not work for me in that area. I will have to do the legwork. I will have to knock on doors. I will have to go to people. So my point is effectiveness means you will keep doing every system because you only think that you should go to the people. Efficiency says no. 
I need to build a system that is unique to me, that works with my needs and produces the best result with minimum waste and effort. So for the former bank um, accounting officer in the bank, that person's effectiveness, sorry, efficiency will happen by emails, phone calls, and WhatsApp messages. Well, for the other person, it is gorilla marketing. <laughs> Do you have sense? Yeah. Because their mix is not the same. So strategy for both of them is different. So the positioning I'm talking about, man, is that it's not that you are passive, no. It's that you understand your mix. How many of you realize that there are some customers, if you send them a message today, I'll send them tomorrow, they'll block you. Yeah. So if you want to market to that customer, will you send a message every day? No. So when you do bulk SMS and you send to that customer, what do you think that customer does to you? So you see that strategy is already a problem for you. By following a strategy that you do not think through, you have actually put yourself in an inefficient position with that customer. That's what I'm saying. So efficiency is you sitting down to understand what is my specific goal, what is my measurable strategy to achieve it, how attainable is it, how relevant is this all is my setup for that client, and then in what time frame do I want to achieve it? Does that make sense? Yeah. I just a question, right? Thank you. Yeah. Okay, what's after that? I think I have room for one more and I'm done. Good morning. Yeah, come on. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Mr. Um, my question is on talent. Yeah. Uh, because um, you said that without the talent, all the governments you have said here is ineffective. Yes. Now, I am new to New York real estate. Yes. My question is, how do you know the target suitable for yourself so that it's not too high or too low? Oh, thank you. Yeah. Okay, it's very easy. Setting targets is, is a companion with a number of things. First and foremost, if you want to be a part of an organization like the structure, the organization actually has set target for you. Yeah. The work that is not left for you is to either rise up to the location or decide that the target is set is too high. The problem with that is that in both scenarios you are right. Did you hear me? I say it. In a structured organization like this, the organization typically has set target for you. The thing is, you are now left with one of two options. Either to rise up to the challenge or to say the target is too high, I can't meet it. The problem is that in both options, you are right. You are the one that determines what the outcome is. So if I realize that I have a target and that target is not within my comfort zone, what that does shows me is that I'm not in my convenience threshold environment. It means I need to build more. So I have to get intentional. If, for example, the reason why that target is hard for me is because I'm afraid of talking to people to sell. So you see, that's why you have to break it down. What is the reason why that target looks far for you? There must be a reason, and that reason is unique to you. Some people are shy, and that's the reason why they think they can't sell. I don't think they are shy today. But some people think they are shy, so they don't want face-to-face -face communication. Those people would rather do what we call an inanimate communication, email, short messages, they don't want to talk to people. The bottom line is, they have to tell themselves that I have a target and I'm going to rise up to that occasion to meet it. Now, in deciding that, they now sit down and do this. Listen, people, after everything I've told you today, it is not wrong for you to start from being effective. But don't stay there. Do that make sense? Yeah. It's okay for you to make the kill with wastage at first. That's a sign that you have not mastered it yet. The problem is when you stay there and keep killing it with so much waste. That's what I'm trying to debunk. Do you understand? Everybody starts from effectiveness. So, the way to set that target is if you have to go to the bus stop, do it. It's part of the process. You will test the bus stop, you will test WhatsApp group, you will test email. You will test all of them. Why? You want to achieve the target. By the time you go by a period of time, you will measure the outcome. You will see the one that Boston has produced. You will see the one that India has produced. You will see the one that going to 
association club, your parako has produced. You will know where you are getting what? More returns for the effort put in. Then you will begin to apply efficiency more to where? Those areas. The end goal is that you are still chasing that target. Now, at the end of the timeline, you may have only done 40% of the target, true? You didn't meet the target, right? Wrong. You are taking something more valuable. You know what works and what doesn't. So you know what to drop and what to keep. And just refocus that. Over a period of trying and working, you will not only hit that target, you will smash it. Why? Because you have consciously learned what works and what doesn't. That's the difference between effectiveness and efficiency. Very clear, right? Last question. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Evangelist Princess David. My question is simple. There's this word called maximizing your time. Yeah. Straight to the point, I have bias. And they tell me, can you give me some time? Yeah. And their time is not definite. Yeah. No date, whatever. Sometimes again, I try to call them up, China more kinds of family, this and that. And so when are we now going? Somehow I know. So I try to persuade them, please, can you come to our office? Just to have a walk. Go ahead with your question. I don't want to so, so, can you just come to our office, you know, to see things for yourself and things like that? They still tell you, give me some time. But they are prospective buyers. They are interested, they are willing, but they are just like, give me some time. Maybe to see how fussy you are going to be or whatever. But I just said, please, can you just come to our office? I'll, 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 I'll pay the transport, everything, whatever. Just come around. Even if you are driving out, I'll buy you a fuel. They still tell you, Give me some time. So that's my question. This, you know, time frame, do we just relax and wait for the person? So I need to maximize my time to meet my target. Thank you. Thank you for the question that I have hours on them. Stimulate, educate, activate. Now, I designed this bottom block because I facilitate. I train people in, um, in, in um, management um, courses. So I realized that from my work over the last decade, People always struggle to understand that talk. So I have to find a simple way to break it down for them to understand it. So I came up with this bottom. So if you go typically online, you'll find that top part. But it's always difficult to understand. So I created a simpler way to get it so it's easy to understand. So the bottom part is that it says stimulate, educate, activate. If you take the first one out of there, I call it the C approach, S-E-A. Every client goes through this process in achieving that. So let me break it down. What is stimulation? Let me give you a practical explanation. If you all went to the junction right now, eh, and you are standing on the road, and a damper came and passed, would you look twice? Would you look twice? But if a Ferrari came, would you look twice? Why? Why? Because your normal has been disrupted. Do you understand? The first step to getting a client to stop dead in their track is to disrupt their normal. So if they already expect you to be a marketer, don't be. Let me say it again. If they already expect you to be a marketer, don't be a marketer. That's the only way to disrupt their normal. So call them ask about their children. When did their children's birthday? That's the only point. See, that was the reason why I called. That's the only reason why I called. God bless you. Bye bye. Come on, Sir, please. What kind of soup do you like? See, that's not the kind of question a marketer will ask me. So, if a marketer asks me that question, I will be confused. Because I'm not expecting that. But when the marketer wants to talk about land, I already know the question you want to ask me. I know where you are going to. I've blocked you. So, the best thing to catch in a customer is to do what they are not expecting. That's the only way to disrupt their normal. It is called stimulation. There can be no stimulation if there is no emotional connection. That is your end goal. You want to create emotional connection with the client. Why? Because once you begin to build emotional capital with the client, 
Remember what I said? The real business of real estate is not selling land. It is what? Selling relationships. So you are selling relationships. Now, by the time you begin to build a relationship with the client, you don't have to worry. Because the others will happen by natural occurrence. So, in stimulation, if you look at the top part, you see the arrow. The arrow at the bottom for stimulation covers two places in the top. Which is what? Need recognition and product specification. Now, in the, in the, if you go to do an MBA, the top is what they will teach you. But the problem with the courses in the MBA is that they teach us in theory. They don't explain how it works. What is need recognition? Sometimes, to sell to a client, like chairman, eh? chairman is already a wealthy man. So, I cannot use price to sell to him. That is me identifying the need of this client first. That the need of this client is not discount. He's wealthy. But this man may just like to be able to sit down with somebody that he can talk on the same level of intelligence. That is the need that appeals to him. If I can deduce that that's what he likes, that's why if you want to profile those strategic clients, eh, if you want to sell to strategic clients, profile them first. Understand what works with them. Understand what doesn't work. What you are doing is called need recognition. I want to know the need of these clients. My goal is to sell real estate. Don't forget it. But I want to know the need of this client. So if I meet this client and I realize that he likes to talk about the Nigeria economy, sit down with him for two hours, talk about the Nigeria economy and say, this is a nice meeting, you go. Go. I'm telling you, go. Let me tell you. He is the one that will call you next time. When are you around my environment again? How many of you believe that is true? He is the one that will call you. Why? He experienced something that first time. You became what we call kindred. He wants to repeat that experience. So the next time you come to him, you're like, ah, sir, sorry, I have much, I don't have so much. I, I can spend a few time today. Fine, I have to go and market my real estate food. You know that's why I'm taking myself. Do you know what you're asking us? How much is it sell? Do you think he's buying because he needs it? No. He's buying because he needs you. Because you are feeling something. And I'm saying, okay, let me take 10. If I buy 10, sure you come and be to me every day in the week. Let's be just He will buy 10, not because he's looking at the price, but because you have connected what we call kindred. So what is happening here is that this began with what? Need recognition. You understood what his need was. His need is not discount. So don't use discount approach to sell to everybody. That's what we call the bazooka effect. You are not shooting everywhere. No. You understand the client you are selling to. That's efficiency. So I can do tops. Total time invested in this man. Six hours in a month. And I've sold 10, 10 plans to him. Somebody has shared 2,000 flyers and not sold two. That's the difference between effectiveness and efficiency. I'm becoming what? Strategic. So that I can do more with less. So, after need recognition, you begin to do what we call product specification. How? Do you notice the second time I came to him, I did not say, we are selling land of 1.2 million or 7.5 million. I said, I need to sell land for me to give you this time. Do you understand what just happened? I have defined the product for him. The product is specific. You want my time, give me value. If I don't tell I say land is 40% discount. The man is a billionaire. The man already owns properties everywhere. The value to him is not discount. I tell you a real life situation. I work for a client. This man needed to charter eight jets to move oil and gas equipment to Nigeria. Live, I'm not telling you a story. I was sitting down there like this. One of the biggest Korean companies in Nigeria wanted to do the job for him. And they were like, they will give him a discount of $300,000 on each jet. The man was like, that's too small, leave it. Don't give me discount. Make sure you deliver my job. $300,000 on each jet. Eight. 
The man said, no, 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 leave this camp. I don't want to hear this camp. I don't want to hear any story on my transaction. Because you will not tell me this camp is the reason why I didn't deliver. Leave this camp. I was sitting down there like 300,000 times eight. Thousand dollars. He said, Naya. The man said, move it. Focus. If you, if you don't deliver on this job, I have your head on the pattern. Leave this camp. That's 2.4 million dollars. The man waved it aside. Those kind of people, you are not telling them this camp. For real estate. This value is not discount. The man is looking for relationship. He wants to be able to talk to people who can hear him on his level and feel like he's with his kind of person. That is what we call product specification. You have not known what matters to this person. I will focus there. Just focus there. Don't, don't do... You know, sometimes the problem is that sometimes we don't, believe, we don't understand that silence is actually more powerful than voice. Sometimes not talking is more powerful than talking. It's just knowing that the right time you need to speak, you speak what you need to say. So all that is happening between need recognition and product specification is what we call what? Stimulation. But well, here's the biggest problem of stimulation. And this is where it gets tricky. Stimulation produces a natural outcome called doubt. Natural. If you don't know any, if you don't know about something, what's your first response when that thing comes to you? You pause. Two of us. You pause. You resist. Why? You don't know about it. So you don't have what we call trust quotient with that product. So your first response is what? Pause. Am I sure? Yeah. So this is where your people are. They have reached what we call the evaluation of options. Do you know the reason why they have not told you accurately that they don't want to listen to you? It means they've added you to options. So they have not completely removed you, but they are looking for a reason for you to bump above the other ones so that they can prefer you over the other ones. So they have scored. Why? They are in the evaluation of options. And the solution to evaluation of options is education. Do you know what education is? Education is clarity. And in a place where I need to choose amongst options, I need more information to know why this is better than that. So I can choose this over that. But the way to do it, sometimes, is not to focus on the product. Focus on the person. Because their buying decision could be because they don't have enough money yet. But that's not always the case. Most times, the kind of customers you're talking about now, you know they have the money. So the problem is not the money. What they are looking for is a reason to prefer you over because as you have come, 15 other marketers have come, presented the same real estate in Ibejuleki, in Ikorogi. So the man has options. You need to now know how to push yourself up above now by clear, providing clarity for that kind. Which is why, if you didn't do stimulation right, education will be a problem. Because education is built on trust. How many of you here? Did not do a research on mothers and fathers. How many of you here yeah, just saw a school, took your children there, and just registered them? You do not do any research, you do not check out the school, you don't know whether the school meets your what standard. You know why you do that? Because in stimulation, you want to first find out if that school can connect to you emotionally before you decide whether your child can go there. That's the same thing that's happening really in your business. That client is not going to cross this evaluation threshold if you have not built stimulation capital investment. So do you see now? If you have been focused on just selling real estate, the client is going to keep stalling. You know why? It doesn't have emotional capital for you to bump through. Strategy. Change your strategy. Because you know they, can't, they have the money to buy. So that's not the problem. Why are you not pushing? Change your strategy. Uh, who was sharing with us the other day? Somebody who went, the city was sharing with us. Somebody who was chasing a contract somewhere and found out that the man sitting on his signature, the daughter was getting married now with them, flew from here to Abuja, chartered a car to Niger, carried police escort, didn't have the money to pay, carried police escort, entered there with white and brother. As they were inside the church, went to shake the man. The man didn't even know who he was. Or when you saw the man with police escort, he was one man, this person, the dignity that came to my wedding, I don't know. Shake the man's hand, sat on a very strategic location with his wife, because he had police escort, everybody gave him respect. Sat down there, did it, did it, finished the wedding, shake, went to shake the man, thank you, brought a gift for the, for the daughter. Gave it to the daughter in front of the man and left. The man was wondering, who is this person? Is he from the boy's side? I don't know. 
Two weeks later, the man got to Lagos. This guy showed up in his office. And I'm like, ah, no, please put your there. So I was at the top of my Oh, that was you. What are you doing in my office? Ah, ah. He's gone, he's gone. Bring it, bring it, bring it, let me The man signed it. The man signed it. What do you think has happened? Did the guy market again? He didn't market the product he came. He has marketed the man's emotion. That's why I tell you, real estate is what? A relationship product. Sell relationship. Genuinely be interested in the people you are selling to. Don't just sell, collect the commission and abandon them. Because those people are the easiest way for you to be sell. Because people do not buy, people always buy what other people they know have. I say it again. People prefer to buy what other people they know have. So the easiest way for you to sell real estate to her and her is to first sell to her because she knows her and she will tell her to buy from you. We call it reputation capital. So sometimes the strategy to hit that person eh, is now that that person has stored, if you want to build emotional capital with this person, eh, find out who they know. Who is close friend with them? If you are sold to that person, you say, sir, trust me, we are the best. Your friend has bought from me. The moment you leave, you pick up the school. Did you wear a receipt from this? You get delivered. You are not going to ask, oh, you are come and take the check. Do you know what you've done? You've evaluated your options. And you have now created a strategy to create education. Why? You want to go through that person's doubt. Once you go through that person's doubt, the natural outcome is what? Activation. They will decide to do. So your people are storming here. Evaluation of option. The best way to kill evaluation of option, if they have been storming there for a while, it means you didn't build enough stimulation capital. Go back there. Go and look for another way to enter. Because what you're doing is, ah, sir, the estate, the real estate is going over. Are you not taking big men over here is going? They know they have options. It doesn't foster them. So if you're using that approach, it won't work. But these people will know that in need recognition and product specification, you have built capital. So that same person that you have, those people you are trying, go and look at their network, go and do the research. So coming back to what she said, I'm not saying you should sit down and do nothing, but be efficient by being strategic. Go and look for the people around that person that you have sold to or P1 and sold to. Even if it's not you that sold, P1 and sold to those people. Say, sir, it's all you respect. We are a trusted brand. I know this person is your friend. He has 10 estate people, 10 plans to talk. This person is your friend, 20 million person. You won't regret the choice. Ask them. That's what we want. The person will call. And when they say, really, you bought from them, eh? Ah, no, they are very good. They deliver. This one is not a sham. They are good. The person will call you themselves and say, come and take the check. You have booked yourself in the option. And that's what brings you to activation. In activation, two things happen. One, they make a purchase decision. They make a purchase decision. That's fine. But this is where most of all miss it. We end our relationship in purchase decision. Forgetting that that person becomes your biggest capital for doing more. Because that person can easily refer you, or it's easier for that person to refer you. So activation is about killing product purchase decision and ensuring that you maintain relationship after. I'm done, my time is up. Thank you. Time is money, is it not? Uh, if time is money, and sometimes we say there is no time. If you say there is no time, and time is money, does it mean there is no money? <laughs> you don't have time, it's just that we feel money that time for the And like I always tell people, some will say I don't have money. It's not possible, you always have money. But it's just the way you spend your money. Some people will spend their money on what they don't need, or on what they want, and live what they need and tomorrow they'll tell you they don't have money. If you say you don't have money, then how have you been living? How have you been surviving? So there's always time, and we always have money. So if you manage your time properly, if you go by the instructions given to you, you will be successful in the business.